Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, I'm going to talk about something that sees a lot of debate in the DJ industry, and that is whether or not you should put pricing on your website. Let's talk about it. Hmm, pricing. It is a topic that sees a lot of discussion in the DJ community. How much should you charge? Are you higher than the guy down the street? Are you lower than the guy down the street? Are you undercutting? Are you charging too much? There are so many discussions out there about the topic of pricing. This particular video though, I'm gonna chat about whether or not you think it's a good idea to put pricing on your website. Again, there's so much debate out there. Some DJs will say, yep, I put all my information out there. Some DJs say absolutely not. But let's dive in and let's talk about the three types of pricing models that you generally see when it comes to DJs and what they put on their website. First one, DJs do not put a single price point anywhere on their site. And I get it. There's DJs out there that they don't want to give any type of preliminary information to a client. They want to learn more about the event. They want to learn more about the client themselves. They want to know what's involved, the venue, how much equipment is needed, what type of add-ons the client might be interested in. So they don't put pricing on their website because they need to have that preliminary call or email or consultation to get all the information up front before they can supply a quote with an adequate number. The second pricing model are DJs who will put a figure on their website and that number is generally a starting point. So they'll say we start at XYZ. And that gives a client a general rough idea in regards to what their investment is going to be at from a minimum standpoint. Those guys will still want to have a consultation or a call or an email with the client to get more information, but it gives the client at least that starting point of knowing where um, or, or how much money they're actually going to have to spend. The third pricing model, and this is generally where I come into play. This is how I do things with my website they will list out packages and all of their pricing and they just put it all out there. They'll say for this package you get A, B, C, D, E for this amount. Now, out of these three pricing models, not one of them is better than the other. If you are putting pricing on your website or if you're keeping all of that a secret until you actually talk to your client, one way is, like I said, it's, it's not better than the other. The reason why I put my pricing on the website is for a few different reasons. One, I hate tire kickers. I don't want somebody wasting my time, and I don't want to waste their time. If a bride and a groom has a set budget and they can only afford so much, there really isn't a whole lot that I can say or do that's going to get them to change their mind. Sure, maybe I could squeeze you know, a couple extra hundred dollars from them for something, but why? If they have a budget that they want to stick to, then just let them find somebody out there that can give them what they want at that price point. Also, another reason why I put my pricing on the website is because clients know pretty much immediately um, what their, or very close to their total cost is going to be. Most of the packages that I have on my site do fit into a majority of the weddings and events that I do. There's a disclaimer though that does talk about additional fees and costs may be incurred, if there's travel involved, it's a pain in the ass venue. Uh, there's some little add-ons that have to be added, uh, things like that. Um, and then I also list a bunch of additional add-ons that if a client were interested in knowing more about, they can inquire about it and I can give them pricing about those specific add-ons. But the general pricing for most of my weddings falls within three packages. Um, packages just for wedding reception, uh, with everything that they need, uh, a package that includes ceremony, sound, and audio, and then obviously my photo and video booth. I used to have like seven different packages and it was very confusing. Clients really didn't know what, what they wanted, what they needed, 
And I found that I was spending a lot of time just trying to explain what those packages are. So I, I just kind of consolidated and brought it down to just three main packages, and it's been working out great for, my, for me. Also, like I said, um, everything is very transparent to my clients. Um, they don't feel like they are being nickel and dimed or they're being squeezed for everything that they have or being forced to go outside of the budget that they've put together for themselves. Now, like I said, if your pricing model is in the first or the second one that I had mentioned, whether you don't put pricing on your website or you do a starting point, you know, there is no right or wrong if that's working out for you. Um, if you prefer to meet with your client to get all the information before you give them a quote, that's great. Um, if you prefer to give them a starting point, that's great. And if you're like me and you like to put all your pricing out on the website, that's great as well. Um, I think that there's too much focus in the industry about pricing in general, um, what you should price your services at because someone down the street is higher or lower, or having your pricing and all the transparency on your website. I just feel that if a certain way is working best for you as a DJ, just keep doing it. Um, I know there's probably questions out there from DJs that say, hey, I'm doing it this way and I'm just kind of wondering if maybe I should do it a different way. Try it out. See what happens. You may find that if you have all your pricing on your website and you remove it, you may find that maybe you can get more money from your clients or maybe you can boost your prices up. Um, or any other way, maybe you don't have pricing on your website and you're seeing that clients are really bouncing off your site because they're not getting the information that they want. Try putting your pricing or at least a starting point on your website and see what happens. The nice thing about our industry is that there's a lot of testing. So if you're doing something one way and you're curious how things will go if you do something completely different, try it out for a month and just see what happens. And if you're not getting the results that you want, go back to your, your original way. And then, you know, at least you'll know and you'll have the information and the data and the knowledge of knowing that you tried things a couple different ways and it either worked out or it didn't. And hey, you'll be better off in the long run. So that's just how I do things when it comes to pricing. Um, I can also tell you there has been brides in the past that I've seen some like the local wedding groups here in New York that say um, there's nothing more disheartening or upsetting when they have their um, mind set on booking a certain vendor and then there's no pricing on that vendor's website. So when they finally do have a consultation or a phone call with that vendor, and they find out that the vendor is just so far outside of their budget, um, you know, I, I kind of understand the way that some bride and grooms, the way they feel, because they want a certain vendor team or certain vendors for their wedding, and then when they find out that they can't afford it, you know, I, I guess, you know, I can understand how that can be pretty upsetting to them. Um, so kind of think about that in different ways where if you don't have your pricing on your website, um, you may end up having some clients that are upset because they found out that they couldn't afford you. Um, also, too, there's been brides that have said that they don't want to wait around. You know, they, they send in an inquiry on your website or they call and then they got to wait for you to get back to them with pricing or they, you need to ask them more questions or they have to wait until a consultation to find out what the price is going to be. You know, and today, especially with younger clients, millennials, um, Gen Z's, things like that, uh, they don't want to wait. They want their information instantaneously and they just want to get all of the information as soon as humanly possible. They don't want to wait around for you to get back to them with a quote. So uh, there's a lot of different feedback, especially from the client side. Um, if they prefer a vendor that does have pricing or at least a starting point on their website versus a vendor who has no pricing. Um, and just, again, just take that with uh, as you wish and um, if, you, if you think it's it's good to put some type of pricing on your site because of those reasons that a bride and, or groom have, have mentioned excellent um, otherwise you know like I said test it out try different pricing models try doing things in a, in a more unique or different way and just see what happens so there you go guys just some of my feedback and some of my thoughts when it comes to putting pricing on a website. We are now into the first week of, uh, actually no, we're going into our second week of 2023. And again, I just want to thank everybody for liking, subscribing, and commenting on all my videos. Keep doing that. It definitely helps the channel grow. And until next time, friends, a day without dancing is a day wasted. Take care.